Hey everyone, this is Thomas Otten. In this video, I'm going to go over a tip or modification that you can employ when replacing the alternator in your Porsche 914. It is something that is often overlooked and can help make your vehicle's electrical system safer. So, tune in and let's check it out. So here we have our 914 alternator out and we're going to be going into it in a moment but before i do that as this thing is still together i want to see if we can show something maybe if you look in there Do you see a rubber, uh, something rubbery on the towards the bottom there? And notice how close it is to the outer, um, at, to the outer um, uh, cover plate. Just looking down the hole. Okay, there you can see it there a little better. And you notice it's actually touching the top of it, okay? So we're going to look into that a little further. Okay, so we take our 8 millimeter socket on this thing. And remove, there's three of these on here. Okay, so we got the three little nuts off and now we pull this off. Now we can see here, remember what we were talking about, this little rubber piece here. Now look here, look at the back of this, and so you can see how close this is to that. It's so close that it basically rubs the paint off up there. Okay. So then when we pry this little boot back, okay, this is our, our main connection here we're going to use a 10 millimeter take that off this connector off. Okay. So now you look at this boot here. And you see it's torn here, which is not really critical. But this side here, quite often these get torn here. Okay. And what can happen is that this then gets direct contact with this in some cases and that can cause a big problem because this is your positive and this is part of the hooked up to the block of the motor which is negative and so that's a direct short right there Okay, so now we have our old alternator here, side by side, our new Bosch alternator. And Bosch alternator is manufactured in the USA. Thank you, Bosch. Okay. So, what I like to do is check the basic height of this thing. Okay, and I'd like to compare the new with the old so I get about 10.42 on that one and all 
I'm getting 12.01 on that one. Now, there's a little difference because of that washer there that we don't have right here. Um, but I don't think that that makes up. No, that only makes up about 0.75. So I'm, I'm very careful to make sure that when we put this new one on, that we're not piercing into and, and getting even closer to the ground. Because remember, this is 12 volts and this is going to be ground. So we're going to study this a little more. So I've taken the nut off, I'm gonna, so I can have a better reference. We do have a little washer here as well. So we're going to just measure again. And what do we get? Get about 10.61 on that one. And then on this one, again, to the washer, top to the washer, we get about 11.35. So I'm immediately concerned about this one being a little higher so okay so now we've got this um this main lead here attached and so um we've got our little rubber boot that we're going to put over it and um i can feel that metal um as soon as I put my finger there. This rubber boot is in okay shape. We're gonna put some silicone to fix that. <clears throat> but what I'm gonna do first is I'm going to, I'm gonna basically cut this. I'm gonna cut the excess off. And that's just, that's to help me with what I discovered here about this one protruding out farther but then it's also to give me a little more peace of mind i don't want this in any way ever to touch this and i don't want that this rubber to ever break down and then that to happen so i'm gonna i'm gonna give myself a more more of a safety factor i'm going to cut that off so i use my cutting wheel and i just cut that thing off whatever was excess i just cut it off and there you can see the little bit that i took off it looks a little smaller than it actually was put some paper in here so that sparks and metal didn't just go down in there but um yeah so that's what we've done so now with the boot on put the boot on We've actually got some cushion there now. We've got, oh, I don't know, a few millimeters before it bottoms out. I feel a lot better about that. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna put a little silicone in there so that this thing isn't, isn't loose like this and also repair this little tear. Okay, so we see we have the, uh, some silicone put in there and um, using this basically high temperature gasket maker material <clears throat> so now what we're gonna do though here's another issue this plate right here originally is supposed to have a gasket that goes around there and if you look into it it's a no longer available gasket so if you have a gasket there, that's going to give this thing even a little more space to rise up, keeping this plate away from this guy, right? I'm going to use this silicone to make myself this gasket. So what I'm doing is I'm using the old washers from the old unit. And I'm putting them on first. And that's going to give me that little bit of space that I need. Similar to what the original gasket was.
Now I'm just going to barely tighten these. I'm gonna use my judgment to get them mostly the same. I'm just gonna bring this thing down. I'm not gonna put hardly any torque on it at all. And then we're gonna allow this stuff to dry. First, I'm gonna put a little more silicone in there. Fill that gap up a little bit. And we're just gonna clean off the excess RTV. So now that I got the excess RTV cleaned off, basically I'm going to allow this thing to dry for an hour. That's what this thing seems to dry in an hour. So, um, and then I'm going to, yeah, come back. And at that point, then I'll put a little torque on these or hand tighten them a little better. And, um, and then it should be ready for reinstallation. That's all I have for today's video. Thanks for watching and please like and subscribe to the channel. Until next time, juice.